I'm standing with uh, Pamela Morgan, who has a background in law and who has just recently published a book, and it's called Crypto Inheritance Planning, or Crypto Asset Inheritance Planning. Um, this and is one of my passion projects. Uh, obviously, I wrote a book about it, but um, you know, I, I think that as we start to take control of our money, we as as we start to take these things out of the par uh, out of the hands of third parties. Excuse me. Um, Third parties do provide some services. <laughs> and so when we take control away from them, we need to figure out how to provide those services for ourselves. And so that's what the book is about. The book is all about how owners of crypto assets can create an inheritance plan that will allow them to maintain full control of their keys without giving their th keys to a third party, without giving custodianship of their assets to a third party, and allow their loved ones to inherit those assets when the time comes, but not before. And that's a tricky balance. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, so without giving away any spoilers, uh, can you give away some of the key secrets of the book or highlight some of the, 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 the areas? Is it like a multi-sig solution or, or, or what do you advocate? Yeah, so, um, so I am a lawyer. Uh, I'm licensed to practice law in two states in the U.S. Don't hold that against me. Um, but, and, and, and the lawyer answer to that is there is no one solution that is right for everyone. It really depends on your family, on your jurisdiction, on what assets you have, on the technology choices that you've made. So some people are totally comfortable having an air gap machine and you know fully following like a, a glacier protocol, something like that. Most of the people who I deal with could not have an air gap. They don't even know what the word air gap means, okay? So to, to expect people to do that sort of security levels is, is kind of, um, I think it's risky because people will either try to do those levels and fail or they won't try at all. Um, so the book is really written for people who have an average level, average in our, in our space. Um, there's talk of multi-signature in there for sure. Um, one of the things that I love most about multi-signature is that it doesn't have to be multi-person. It can be multi-factor multi-signature. And what that means is you can still maintain full control of all of your keys. So for example, if you were gonna set up a two of three, you could have one be your uh, Trezor hardware wallet, the second one be a Ledger hardware wallet, and the third be either a, a browser application or something on your smartphone. And you could have two of those three keys required. So it's a good way to keep your funds a little bit safer, but also not making you reliant upon a third party. Um, there are other options as well, uh, like using um, passphrases. So those are advanced uh, security features. And then, um, you know, there are things as simple as, well, what most people do, what most people do, hopefully you're not doing, uh, is they cut up their seed. They take their, their 12, 18, or 24 words and they cut them into pieces. Um, that is the worst thing you can do. And the reason is because it actually gives you worse security. You're actually reducing the amount of security in, in your seed by cutting it up into pieces. And so there are much better ways to do it, like multi-sig, um, like passphrases. Uh, you can also, you may not know, or maybe you guys know about this, um, the Satoshi Labs, who are the people who make the Trezor hardware wallet, they have something called a slip 39, which is a Satoshi Labs improvement proposal, number 39. And what's cool about it is it's a standardized implementation of Shamir, of Shamir secret sharing. And so what that does is it allows you to take a, a, a secret that you know and separate it out into pieces, kind of like multi-sig, but different. And then you can take those pieces and recombine them. So it's different ways to have, uh, to hold your crypto assets. These are all in development. Um, you know, the, the Shamir secret sharing is not standardized yet. Um, and why standardization matters is because in inheritance planning, if I use a Shamir secret sharing that was made by Fred, okay, in order for you to inherit my assets, you have to find that implementation that Fred did. So you have two layers of complexity instead of just one. So the standardization really makes a difference. Um, there are some free resources on my website at empoweredlaw.com. And you don't need to know about multisig, and you don't need to know about Shamir's, and you don't need to know about advanced passphrases to get started on crypto asset inheritance planning. Mm -hmm. You can actually get started right now, today. Um, go to my website at Empowered Law. I have two free resources for you. One is a letter to loved ones. And it's literally a template that starts, dear loved ones, 
If you're reading this letter, it's because I want you to know that I have crypto assets. Please be careful because anyone who sees my crypto assets can steal them. And you go on and you, and you kind of walk your family through who might be able to help them and what assets you have. Again, this is totally free and the templates are available for you to use, customize, make them your own, make them work for you and your situation. Great. Does your book get into tax impl implications also with inheritance? Or? It does not. Oh. Um, it br we ta I talk a briefly about it, a couple of paragraphs. So what the book focuses on is, um, is, is creating a practical plan, a practical implementation plan for owners of crypto assets. So we start out with a concept of, of get it done. So basically it's like, okay, what can I do in anywhere between 30 minutes to like three hours? Because people will usually devote that amount of time. So let's get something done now. And then the next section is about making it better. So how can I improve my security? How can I improve my plan? How can I make my plan better? The next section is about making it legal. And it's not what you think. Um, the making it legal section is actually all about how to find a lawyer, how to do research to keep your costs down, how to prepare for your meetings so that you can come in as an informed person, so that you can help the lawyer do their jobs, and also how to fire a lawyer, <laughs> which you, you can imagine is wildly popular with my colleagues. Um, but it's something that people really need to understand in order to make sure that what they want to have happen will actually happen. And then the final part of the book is about keeping it fresh. So unfortunately, um, inheritance planning is not a set it and forget it kind of thing. It's something, especially with these technologies, as, as they're changing, as we have new tokens, as we have new platforms, as we have you know, new and fun things that we're doing with these assets, um, we need to be updating our inheritance plans. And so the keeping it fresh section has a bunch of tools, like for example, setting calendar reminders once a year to refresh your plan so that you can go back and make sure that your plan is as good as it can be. Wow, that's fascinating. Okay, yeah, well, we can imagine what can go horribly wrong if it's not done right, because uh, if private keys are lost, then the funds are lost. And um, I think just uh, recently in the news, I heard a story um, at, at less than a month ago, there's a cryptocurrency exchange based in Canada called Quadrica. Um, and the CEO of that company unfortunately passed away, but he didn't. He, he had his private keys hidden, um, and not even his wife knew where they were, and nobody was able to recover those private keys. So um, it had um, detrimental effects on all their customers. I think um, $150 million were lost or something like that. So that could have been prevented if they would have followed the guidelines of your book, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. That that should not be happening now. Um, and, and, you know, I my heart breaks for all of the people who lost their money. It's a, it's a big tragedy. Um, but that's one of the dangers of leaving your money on exchanges, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not your keys, not your coins. And so, you know, when we trust exchanges, we're trusting all of their processes that they have in place. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a tragedy that should have been prevented. You know, there, for those of you who don't know, um, I am a board member of C4, which is the Cryptocurrency Certification Consortium. Now you know why we call it C4. <laughs> it's way easier to say. Um, and C4 is a nonprofit, actually based out of Canada, and um, totally volunteer run organization. And we have something called the CCSS, which is the Cryptocurrency S uh, Security Standard. And that was written by the community for the community. And it sets out a baseline for companies that are operating in this space. And it says, hey, do you have a key compromise policy? <laughs> what happens if something happens to one of your principles? Um, how are you generating your keys? Are you generating them in a secure way? So for people who are building uh, applications in this realm, if you're, if you're dealing with keys, you might want to take a look at that. Again, the standard is completely free. Uh, you can take a look at it. There are three different levels, level one, level two, level three. And very soon we're going to start having um, auditors who will be able to audit to those standards. Great. Um, well, you've published this book, and um, are you working on any further books? Or yeah, can, can you tell us? Yeah, totally. So um, this book is written for owners of crypto assets. It is written. It's. I try to write it in the most conversational, like as we're sitting here talking right now, way that I possibly can, because the the, the topic of inheritance planning is kind of scary anyway for most people. So I try to you know kind of really walk you through the process. 
I'm currently writing a book for lawyers. <laughs> and that book is very different. Um, they make different assumptions about what the tokens are. They make assumptions about whether or not uh, parties can be compelled, even though we know that they can't, you know, if they don't have keys. Um, so I'm writing a book specifically for lawyers because I want to train as many people as possible. And I, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of education. I try to train and, and share my knowledge as, as widely as I can um, because we need it. Mm -hmm. And so in order to prevent losses, we need to train not only owners on how to manage their cryptocurrencies, but we also need to train the people who are, uh, who are what's the word I'm looking for, um, like professionally advising uh, the people who are in, in our space, right? So, you know, you have a lawyer, you have an accountant, you have someone who supposedly knows what they're doing. I want to make sure that they do know what they're doing and that they are educated in these technologies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if, if somebody is holding a lot of crypto assets, um, do you advocate um, consolidating to one uh, currency crypto asset or what if it's a diverse portfolio? Is that going to be troublesome in terms of inheritance? or? I mean, you know, it really depends. I try never to tell my clients what they should or shouldn't do because the reason that we're in this, at least a lot of us, is freedom, right? The freedom of choice, the freedom to own our own money. Um, and, you know, there's a balance between what works for you now and what will work for your family and inheritance, right? And so you, you may be fine if your family doesn't inherit all of your ERC-20 tokens, right? Maybe you're cool with that. Maybe you're like, I don't need them to inherit everything. I just want them to inherit, you know, my ETH. Or I just want them to inherit my Bitcoin or whatever it is, right? And so you can make choices on, you know, accessibility. And, and it has to, any plan that you write has to work for you, right? Because ultimately it's your plan. You know, we're writing it for them in the future. But right now you're the one who has to use it. So I would never tell someone to, you know, liquidate all of their other assets and you know now you have to hold everything in cold storage because it's not realistic mm -hmm. does that answer your question yeah it does okay. yes yes it does all right um well we can uh, find your book on um on amazon.com right yes. and is there anything else you want to tell the audience of how to look you up and yeah um so you can find my book on amazon it's available in ebook uh, paperback and audiobook if you buy the paperback you get the ebook for free if you buy the audiobook you get the ebook for free um and if you want to check it out there are free samples online on amazon it's also sold on amazon affiliates so amazon stores around the world germany australia canada everywhere um, and you can also get started for free. You don't have to wait for the shipment of the book. Um, if you go to my website, empoweredlaw.com, E-M-P-O-W-E-R-E-D-L-A-W.com. You can also find me on Twitter at PamelaJD, P-A-M-E-L-A-W, get it, Law, J-D. Fantastic. Okay, it's great talking to you, Pamela Morgan, and thank you for coming to ETH Denver. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, and thanks for the interview. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys.